I was in an online conversation the other day. Uh, it was actually relating to fantasy RPGs, but we were talking about the tropes of starting your campaign or your game off and usually involve something like everybody meets in a tavern, they have a few drinks, beat up the barkeeper and then go out and kill some dragons. And that got me to thinking about the various ways you you can start your traveller games. Indeed, some ways I have started my traveller games. Um, and so I've compiled a, I'll call it a top six list, but it's not, it's just six different ways, to be honest. There's nothing top about these at all. Okay, so here's the first one. Um, you can see on screen, uh, I've got a link here to the Mainstain uh, class freighter. It's common, or a trope within Traveller games, that you start off, especially classic Traveller, that you start the game off with one of those small scout ships with a tiny little cargo bay. That's all right, but there is always trouble trying to get um, small enough, valuable enough cargo in there to make it a worthwhile enterprise. And sometimes your characters have to do something a little illicit in order to, to make the next mortgage payment, that sort of thing. Well... This idea is, rather than starting them off small, why not start them off big? And the mainstay class freighter is, if memory serves, oh, it says here, 3,000 ton ship with, I think it's got over 1,000 tons of cargo space. Make your PCs a crew on this ship. Let's see if we can see the uh, preview of it and get a nice picture for you. I think it's the second or third page in the preview. There we go. It's a beautiful looking ship, almost whale-like, um, but it's massive. So finding enough cargo to fill that hold and therefore earn enough money to pay for the massive amounts of uh, juice the engines take is going to become the challenge. Uh, and it's a different take from the small ship at the outset. Here, you're on a big ship. So your, your PCs don't even have to be the, ca the cabin crew. They don't have to be the pilot and the navigator, although they could be. Um, you could just be working the ship. But the idea with this massive hold is that it gives you a lot more opportunities, uh, a lot more options for what you can carry and what problems that can create. For instance, you could ship on board two, three hundred low berths for a particular trip or live cattle you get so many more options when you have that extra space you know it, it could be a mercenary unit looking to move in perhaps they've lied to the players and they're actually jumping into a hot system there's a lot more opportunities with a bigger ship and you're still going to have to play the game of taking dodgy cargoes you're not going to get away from that because finding cargoes through the normal rules that would fit that amount of uh, volume is quite difficult. Okay, so uh, let's move on to number two. Number two, uh, pushing my own stuff here. Preceptor service is uh, another Imperial service, but it, it's a good guy service. Um, so start your PCs out, not just as characters rolled up in the Preceptor service, but actually taking part in what the service does. The pre -ser Preceptor Service is an uplift school system. They drop flat-packed uplift schools with enough people to man that school onto backwards worlds. Perhaps a new planet's been discovered. It's, uh, its people are barbarians. They've you know fallen that far back in technology. Well, the uplift school's job is to uplift, to educate, to bring that society back up. So it's a different take. Rather than the PCs being out for themselves, they're here. They're out to look after another people, to uplift them, to introduce them to technology, to educate them, to try and protect their culture as well. This is not just about schoolrooms. A backwards world can be a wild world. There could be mega fauna wandering around. You know, we could have T-Rexes or the equivalent wandering around there. There could be strange tribes cults, um, just evil, chaotic choices, some uh, shamanistic individuals might 
resent the fact that these strangers are coming and are teaching these new ways. So there's a lot of possibilities for conflict and adventure within the preceptor service. The idea being that the school is dropped and they'll come back in five, six years to see how you're doing. It's that kind of a, I suppose it's kind of like a Peace Corps initiative. Um, but there's still plenty of uh, opportunity for using your weapons. All right, let's move on to the uh, next item, which is, again, another one of my own things. Um, this was written, the experiments was written as a one-shot scenario, ideal for um, taking into those, those one-shot situations, you know, when you're in a shop with a bunch of strangers or whatever. Uh, but it does give you an interesting opening. The, the premise is that the PCs have paid a lot of money to take part in a new colony. There's a new world going to be opening up for them. Um, they're going to have, you know, it's a chance to start again for those that have got a history. So all your PCs have to have bought into that idea. So you're starting the campaign there. Unfortunately, things don't go according to plan. They go to sleep. They expect to wake up at the new planet, you know, maybe jump into a shuttle and go down to the surface and start building a cabin by the lake. But what actually happens is they wake up, they find themselves in a dark, unlit room, uh, actually lying on an operation table in an operating theatre. But the lights are gone, there's nobody around, and there's water pouring down the walls. So it's a horrible scenario for them to find themselves in. And it goes on, they find they're actually trapped underground. And so there's this mystery about what's happened. But that water pouring down is also flooding the lower levels and the water level is rising so it creates a a a mystery and an adventure and an escape story and then you can have your pcs emerge from this scenario with literally nothing and that can give you a great start point or, or you've already done the start but a, a great place to move on from where they've spent all their money buying into this colony mission then been stripped of everything and what was done to them on that operating table? So the mystery could be carried on. Who did it? What what company? Was it a company? What malicious um, evil organisation was taking part in this? And so it can give the PCs an enemy that they need to deal with. OK, um, I mentioned Colony. The next idea um, I actually used to try and start a campaign but the campaign went south pretty quickly <laughs> because the, the players uh, didn't buy into the idea so my idea was that i would start my new campaign on a fresh colony world so there'd be a, a whole flat pack colony dropped and the players would you know like a wild west kind of thing they'd try and take the territory get the farmland and do that whole settler mentality it it didn't go that way but the the start of that campaign is what was interesting because i didn't tell the players that was what i was aiming at so they had no idea what was happening i had them wake up out of cold sleep they were on a deck of hundreds of cold sleep berths and only a few people had been woken up but here and there were um open berths and there was nobody around so if you imagine there was a deck of a uh, hundred births, the PCs, five players, their births just opened. The players emerge. They find all the rest shut, but there are another five or six that have opened, but there's nobody in them. So what's happened is they were on this ship. They thought they were, they bought into starting a new colony, but they've woken up out of cold sleep, but their memories have gone. So they, they don't know where they are. They don't know why they're there and they don't know what the purpose of this is. So my idea was to start with a complete mystery for them to start investigating and then find themselves so they could get into the computer system and they could find out their personalities and their names and it would all start coming back to them at that point. But the premise was that something had gone wrong. The ship had actually been out for thousands of years and it had been in orbit around the planet they intended to occupy. But something, some virus or something swept through, killed the crew. And these people, uh, your PCs, 
have just woken up because the power is starting to fade and disappear. So as a precautionary measure, the computer is opening a few pods to let people out to try and deal with it. But it's not set up to do that. So it's um, it doesn't give them any information. So as they emerge, they're on this big colony ship, as it were. Um, they're over a planet, but they don't even know that when they start. And so... Again, it's the mystery they've got to solve. They've got to find themselves and then they've got to, well, get down to the planet. They haven't got enough fuel to jump elsewhere. OK, uh, let's move on. Number five. Not to do with the colony. But again, I used this. This was a not a reset, but it was halfway through a campaign and it was just a, a new and a different way for me to start the session. The PCs were... Um, a fully formed crew. We've been playing for months and months. Anyway, this session started with them, yet again, waking up, um, tied to chairs in what was obviously a basement. Now, I put them in this scenario and there was, I had no idea of who put them there, but they were tied up in this uh, basement and I left it up to them to give me the prompts for why were they there? Who put them there? Where were they? I let the players work that one out. So they started, they got free. They started scouting around, trying to find a way out. They got air vents, etc., And they, they managed to make their way out to, I, th I think they found their way down to a sewer system and got out that way. It's been a couple of years now, so I'm struggling to remember. But the idea was I put them in this situation and I had no idea what, who the NPCs were or anything. I just let the players do it. And they dragged up as possibilities people from their uh, characters' pasts. And I filled in with that and just let it roll. So again, it's a great way to start your... Um, if you're that sort of freewheeling referee, you can get away with just letting the players set the story. They could create backgrounds for their characters if they all, you know, you say you know each other but you don't know where you are, why you're here, but you're all tied up. You know, it, it can inspire them to come up with uh, NPCs that can become long running characters in your campaign. OK, uh, number six, again, pimping one of my own products again. I did a mercenary campaign and they started out taking the much smaller jobs because it started out with just the PCs before they started recruiting other people. Um, building up an actual uh, mercenary company. So they were taking bodyguard jobs as early things. And Callus Cruz is set on a luxury liner. And it's going on a tour in space and it's carrying Baron Kala. And she's a very important person. Um, she has a lot of connections and she needed a bodyguard or a set of bodyguards to go with her on this liner. But there are political enemies, terrorists, if you like, also on this liner. And they wait until this ship is as far from help as it can be. You know, once it's jumped to the, the wonderful binary system uh, where they're going to look at the wonderful spinning suns. Uh, and that's the point where they emerge, as it were. These terrorists appear. They start unpacking their guns. So it's a massive ship. There's um, We had fights in corridors we had um wonderful escapes and things um and a notable fight took place in the casino area um lots of casino machines getting shot up it was quite funny that creates a nice starting scenario for your campaign especially if you're going on to play mercs but the idea of being the bodyguards means that you're starting the campaign with lots of action Lots of shooting in a confined area. So the players, <laughs> depending on, you might have players who like to run away from conflict, but there's nowhere to run. They're stuck stuck on this liner. Um, obviously, until they can get away from the liner or get rid of the terrorists, the, the pressure and the strain sticks around. OK, there you go. That's um, six ideas for how to start your traveller campaign or your CVS engine campaign, if you like. Um, yeah, there you go.